Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about urine uric acid, urine potassium, urine chloride, urine specific gravity, urine pH, urine odor, urine appearance, urine electrophoresis, urine culture and sensitivity, urine light chain or the Benz Jones proteins. And we also talked about the estimated glomerular filtration rate and creatine kinase. Today we're talking about creatinine clearance and why it matters. So let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Especially the last two videos on estimated GFR or EGFR and creatine phosphate. In these videos we talked about the following. Plasma clearance is what? It's the volume of plasma that gets cleared and cleaned of any waste X by your kidney per minute. Plasma with the waste going in, plasma without the waste going out to the blood. The volume of the plasma that got cleared is the clearance, not the volume of the waste. We can exploit the concept behind plasma clearance to measure your GFR. I will give you inulin, which is foreign to your body. Your body cannot make it. Your body cannot metabolize it. So the amount of inulin that I give you in your vein is the same amount of inulin that leaves in your urine. The amount here is the same as the amount here. And from the FIC principle, we know that amount equals volume times concentration. Since the amount here equals the amount here, and since volume times concentration is the amount, you can argue that volume times concentration here equals volume times concentration here. Whose volume is this? Plasma volume. What's that? This is the concentration of inulin in the plasma. How about that? That's my urine volume per minute or urine flow rate. And what's that? The concentration of inulin in the urine. I know the concentration of inulin in the plasma because I gave you the sample so I know the concentration and I can measure your urine volume per minute and I know the inulin concentration in the urine sample. I can also measure it. The only unknown is the plasma volume. The plasma volume or the clearance of inulin is the same as the GFR or glomerular filtration rate. And here's the equation once again. If you have any problem with any of these concepts, please please check my previous video on the EGFR. How do I estimate the GFR? You can use inulin, you can use creatinine, you can use cystatin C. Which one is the most accurate? Inulin. Which one is the easiest to perform? Creatinine clearance, because it's made by your body already. There is no need to inject you with anything. The problem is that it overestimates GFR by about 10%, but no big deal. We can program our computers to account for that 10%. Where did creatinine come from? It came from here, from creatinine and phosphate, which helps your muscle get ATP in the first 15 seconds of exercise. So creatine phosphate of the muscle gets metabolized into creatinine. Creatinine will go to the blood to be excreted into the urine. That's why creatinine depends on your muscle mass. Creatine phosphate also depends on your muscle mass. If I have kidney failure, what's going to happen? I'll be unable to excrete creatinine and my serum creatinine will go up. What if I am a geriatric person losing my muscle mass as I grow older? Less muscle mass equals less creatinine phosphate equals less creatinine. And since we use creatinine clearance to measure the GFR, my GFR is lower because my kidney function is poorer. So I think we can agree that creatinine clearance is a very cool estimate for the eGFR. It's not perfect. It overestimates the GFR by about 10%, but it's approximate. Creatinine clearance is volume over time, and guess what? GFR is also volume over time. What does creatinine clearance depend on? It depends on your muscle mass, which depends on exercise, especially vigorous exercise, which can raise the creatinine phosphate and creatinine, and it also depends on protein intake. If I eat tons of meat and then go to the lab to get a urine sample, you'll find higher creatinine clearance, which will give me the illusion that my GFR is super normal. But then if you wait, my GFR will come down to earth and back to normal. How about the eGFR? This is the glomerular filtration rate. This is your kidney function, which depends on your age. As you grow older, you lose kidney function and your GFR goes down by about 6.5 mL per minute for each decade of your life after 20. So if I am 30 years old, I lost 6.5. If I am 40, I lost 13 mL per minute 
relative to the 20 year old adult. Next, kidney function of course depends on the blood that's coming to the kidney. The kidney is filtering whom? It's filtering the plasma that came in the renal artery. So if I have a problem here, let's say atherosclerosis, fibromuscular dysplasia, or hemorrhage, or third degree burn, or extracellular fluid volume depletion, all of these factors will give less blood to the kidney and therefore GFR will go down. And third, the kidney itself. The nephron's ability to filter will determine the kidney function, which determines the eGFR. With that in mind, it's a piece of cake now. What's the normal creatinine clearance, i.e. what's the normal GFR? For adults under 40, males, it's about 125 mLs per minute. Females, it's about 100. Why is it higher in males? Because they have higher muscle mass on average because of testosterone. How about infants, newborns? They have lower GFR because of low muscle mass. How about the elderly? They have a lower GFR than adults because of their poor kidney function, relatively speaking. Can you give me a good equation that works for everybody? Yes, the normal eGFR is anything more than 60 mLs per minute per body surface area, 1.73 square meters. This is the normal for everybody. Doesn't care about male, female, black or white. It works for every person. Under normal circumstances, all human beings should follow this equation. Now, let me ask you a question. When was the last time someone measured your body surface area? Never. It can be done, but it's complicated. Therefore, we need another equation that does not have a body surface area in it just to make the calculations easier. So it's estimated. This is not measured GFR, this is estimated. Rough and dirty, it's never 100% accurate. Nothing in the lab is 100% accurate, to be honest. So statisticians crunched the numbers and figured out this formula. 1.86 times your serum, not urine, serum creatinine to the power of negative 1.154 times your age power negative 0.203. When you raise your age to a negative power, GFR goes down. The older I get, the lower my GFR. Look at the negative. Next, if the patient is a female, you multiply this result times 0.742. When you multiply something by a number that is less than one, this something gets lower. As you see here, females have lower GFR than males. Next, if the patient is African American, you multiply by 1.21. When you multiply something by a number greater than one, it gets bigger. Why? Why is that here and that here? Because on average, females have a smaller body surface area. African Americans on average has a bigger surface area. But if you account for the body surface area, we are all the same. No differences between sexes or races whatsoever. Under normal circumstances, of course, patients will have a lower GFR. But this equation is about normal and this one is about normal. All of that was normal. Let's talk about the pathology, the abnormal. Ab means away from, just like abduction, while AD means near or close to, like adduct or adduction or adrenal gland, which is close to the renal. Did you know that, Cody? Thank you for joining us. Creatinine clearance is high in the following conditions. If I eat too much proteins before the test, or strenuous exercise before the test, or if I'm pregnant, or if I have high cardiac output, because it means that more blood reaches the kidney and the kidney will filter more, so the glomerular filtration rate goes up and the creatinine clearance, which is used to measure or estimate your GFR, also goes up. But why does it go up in pregnancy? Because pregnancy is a state of hyperdynamic circulation. The cardiac output goes up. And you know why the output is high? Because the input is high. The venous return that goes back to the heart goes up. When the input is high, the output is high. Why is the venous return higher? Because the plasma volume increases during pregnancy. Conversely, creatinine clearance decreases in extremes of age, the very young and the very old. If my kidney is not being perfused, we call this pre-renal azotemia, such as cases of hemorrhage, third-degree burns, 
any case of extracellular fluid volume depletion like severe vomiting, diarrhea, etc. Even if I'm dehydrated and starving in the desert, that will decrease my renal perfusion. Renal artery stenosis such as atherosclerosis, fibromuscular dysplasia, an embolus in the renal artery. Or it could be decreased renal function. Not pre-renal this time, but intra-renal. Blame the kidney itself. It's a nephropathy. Could be caused by ischemia could be caused by nephrotoxicity from heavy metals, antibiotics, etc. What are the causes of hyperdynamic circulation or high output cardiac failure? A. Anemia. A. Anaphylactic shock. A. V. Fistula. Acromegaly. Then you go to the Bs. Berry, berry. Pregnancy and pageant disease, Bs and Ps. And then the Cs, carcinoid and sepsis. And then two hypers, hyperthyroidism and hyperbellyism. Hey, medicosis, have some respect for yourself. Yes, ma'am. I'm just trying to make learning easier for my students so that they can help patients. Now you understand why pregnancy and cases of high output cardiac failure can have higher than expected GFR, which means higher creatinine clearance, higher inulin clearance, etc. To learn more about how your kidney functions, download my kidney physiology course. It will teach you more about the GFR, renal plasma flow, micturition reflex, titratable acidity, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the collecting ducts, the countercurrent multiplier, and much more. Many toxins can damage the kidney. As a good doctor, you need to be aware of the famous toxidromes, like aspirin toxicity, acetaminophen toxicity, antidepressants toxicity, and much more. You can learn about all of these in my toxicology course. Preeclampsia and eclampsia can damage the kidney. You can learn more about them in my Medicosis Perfectionatus OBGYN High Yields course. As for the role of the kidney and the lungs in regulating your acid-base status, I've talked about this in great detail in my acid-base imbalance course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.